Rivers and streams are among the most dynamic ecosystems in this region. We call these lodic ecosystems from the Latin for water in motion. The characteristics of lodic ecosystems and their biotic communities change in a somewhat predictable fashion as they flow downstream from their headwaters toward the sea. These are ever-changing ecosystems that seasonally vary in amounts and velocity of water, typically with peak flows in early spring and low flows in late summer. However, storm events at any season can change the structure of these ecosystems in a matter of hours or even minutes. The composition of the aquatic insect community in a given river or stream is influenced by the chemical, physical, and biological characteristics of these ecosystems that are flowing downhill. Because the larvae of different species of aquatic insects have different niches, they are adapted to different ranges of environmental variables such as nutrient concentrations, dissolved oxygen, temperature, food sources, and pollution levels. Not only do the compositions of aquatic insect communities generally change from headwaters to the sea and with varying levels of pollutants, they also vary on a smaller microhabitat scale with pools and streams having different insect populations than those of riffles and rapids. Likewise, aquatic insects that prefer to attach to the surface of submerged rocks usually are different from those that inhabit the accumulated organic matter in streams known as leaf packs. In some environmental biology courses, the purpose of this laboratory is to compare the differences in the insect fauna among the following four microhabitats each habitat having a different combination of nutrient and oxygen levels. 1. Leaves in pools, high nutrient, low oxygen. 2. Leaves in rapids, high nutrient, high oxygen. 3. Rocks in pools, low nutrient, low oxygen. and 4. Rocks in rapids, low nutrient, high oxygen. In other environmental science classes, you may be investigating the differences in aquatic insects longitudinally through time, the downstream changes in community composition, or with differing stream chemistry. Regardless of the goal of the lab exercise, this video will demonstrate the field collection techniques and the identification methods that you may be using. You will need to refer to your course lab manual for the specific details, but the following video should help you both outdoors as you are collecting the critters and in the lab as you identify them. We will focus on the following six orders. Ephemeroptera, mayflies, Plecoptera, stoneflies, Trichoptera, caddisflies, Diptera, true flies, Odonata, dragonflies and damselflies, and Coleoptera, beetles. These are the methods that are used to collect the invertebrates from local streams. 1. Work in pairs. Each pair of students should obtain one plastic dishpan, four whorl packs or four vials, and two pairs of tweezers. 2. Label each whorl pack or vial with the name or location of the stream, one of the four habitat types, the date, and your initials. Use pencil to label the whorl pack since pen can be washed off by alcohol. 3. Pour about 50 mils of 80% alcohol in each of the whorl packs or fill each vial. You are now ready to collect the aquatic insect larvae. In order to compare the results, it is important that each sample represent a similar sampling effort. If the lab exercise is designed to examine differences in biotic communities among stream microhabitats, systematically sample each of them for a period of 15 minutes. We are only interested in insects, so do not collect crayfish, salamanders, spiders, or other non-insects. For leaf packs, Collect a sample of leaf packs from the stream and examine them in the plastic pan. Pick out the insects that move and transfer them to the appropriate whorl pack. Continue examining leaf packs until the 15 minutes are up. Follow the same procedure for rocks. Transfer a sample to the plastic pan and search it for insects. When sampling, be alert for insects that may be washed off the rocks or leaf packs as you are collecting them. Sample all four microhabitats using the same techniques, then give your four samples to the instructor or TA. If your lab is sampling sites for longitudinal analysis as the goal, you may use kick sampling with a D-net along a transect of a given distance or for a specific length of time. With the net opening facing you and the rim placed as close to the stream bottom as possible, 
Shuffle your feet as you walk in a downstream direction. Insects that are dislodged as you walk will drift into the net and be held there by the current. When you reach the end of the transect or time period, empty the collected organisms into the pan, then transfer them into the labeled whirl pack. Finally, you will need to measure the physical characteristics of the stream before you return to the lab. Measurements may be taken of air temperature, stream temperature, width, depth, velocity, and dissolved oxygen. These should be recorded on your data sheet and shared with other members of your lab section. Be sure that the TA and instructor have your data before you depart the stream site. Later in the lab, you will be identifying the insects you have collected and analyzing the resulting population data. The insect body is divided into three sections. 1. The head. Often separated from the thorax by the neck, this contains the mouth, eyes, and antennae. 2. The thorax. This is where the wings and six legs are attached. And 3. The abdomen, a segmented tail section terminating in the anus and sometimes contains other features such as claws or filaments. Now let's take a look at these features as they help us identify the most common orders of aquatic insects. Plecoptera. Stoneflies inhabit well oxygenated waters and generally shred leaves or scrape algae off of rocks with their robust mouth parts. Stoneflies have two tail filaments, but sometimes they are broken off by the hazards of life in fast flowing waters. The consistent characteristic of stonefly larvae is the presence of gills on the undersides of their thorax segments. Gills are the gas exchange organs that allow aquatic invertebrates to breathe underwater. They often look like small feathers that flutter as they take up dissolved oxygen from the water. They also have two claws at the tip of each leg. Ephemeroptera Mayflies also inhabit rapid waters and resemble stoneflies, but typically with three, sometimes two, tail filaments. As with stoneflies, sometimes one or more of the filaments may be broken off, leaving a short stump behind. The most important diagnostic characteristics of mayflies are that the legs end in a single claw and the gills, if present, are attached to the abdominal segments. Trichoptera Caddisflies have larvae that collect small bits of gravel or plant material to construct a ballast case around their bodies in order to help them maintain their positions as they crawl around on the stream bottom. These cases are built in a consistent fashion by various taxa, and their shapes and construction materials can be used as diagnostic characteristics. Sometimes the larvae becomes detached from their cases as they are placed in the whirl packs. The naked larvae typically have thoracic plates and a pair of leg-like appendages, each with a single claw or hook on the last abdomen segment. These help them hold on to their portable houses. Diptera. True flies have larvae that look like maggots, and indeed they are. Their bodies are soft and their thoraxes lack legs. Diptera are generally filter feeders and often their heads are rather indistinct their bodies looking a bit like miniature tube socks. Coleoptera. Beetles are predators with jaws designed to chew on prey. Unlike Diptera, they have hard heads, thoraxes, and even abdomens. If you take a probe and tap them on the head, you can easily tell them apart. Odonata. These are the predators of the aquatic insect world. They have hinged jaws that can be extended to capture and devour their prey. Dragonflies are rather squat and chunky. Some are large enough to capture and eat tadpoles. Damselflies are more gracile and slender than dragonflies. Do not confuse their three gills protruding from the tips of their abdomens with the filaments of mayflies. The gills of damselflies are quite feathery, while mayflies have filaments that usually resemble cable. These damselflies can also be distinguished by the shape of their heads, usually protruding at right angles beyond the thorax, like a hammerhead. We hope that you have enjoyed the beauty and differences among these groups of aquatic insects, especially after collecting and getting to know them up close. Identifying these indicator species is the key to assessing the environments that they inhabit. There are several taxonomic keys in the laboratory that you can use to further identify the critters that you have collected down to family, genus, or species. 
Once you have identified the samples, there are numerous ways to analyze the resulting data and learn more about the aquatic environments of the region. Just ask your course instructor for the method appropriate for your lab experience.